Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video So today what we're gonna be doing is a top 10 brawlers list as you guys know when the meta changes we do this all the time So we're gonna be doing it again It's gonna be completely different from what we've done previously the 10 brawlers here are pretty new There are obviously some that are gonna stay the same uh, about half of them are still on the list as they were last time But things have definitely changed up a lot and there are gonna be some big changes now before we get into the video I want to say I'm gonna be creating a YouTube streaming channel and I'm gonna be trying to stream on it every single day It's going to be the first link in the description and we're gonna be doing a giveaway in the first couple streams So make sure you guys are subscribed to the account again It's gonna be the first link in the description below and with that being said, let's just get into the games and let's get started So coming in at number 10 we have BB now BB is one of my favorite brawlers in the game And it's been a while since it was meta about six months, maybe half a year um, and it was probably the worst brawler in the game or at least in discussion for the 43rd best brawler in the game literally the worst But it got a slight HP buff and that helped a ton There are many cases with BB where you're just running forward and you're like dang if I just had half a second more I would have been able to get a double kill I would have been able to win my lane I would have team wiped I would have scored a goal Well now you have that half second more BB is a really strong brawler and it is really good in this meta now there are things obviously that counter it with such as like all tanks They do have their hard counters There are brawlers that counter it such as B that we're going up against or M's that we're going up against So there are going to be times where it's going to be a little bit difficult to use BB and that's why it's going to be at number 10 But against majority of the brawlers you can basically just walk up pop your ga gadget if you have it Walk in a straight line and just have a free kill. So that is why BB is going to be our number 10 brawler. So coming at number 9, we have Max. Now, Max is a pretty interesting brawler. It's basically just good at everything. It's a B to a B plus in absolutely everything. And it's been that way for quite a while. It didn't really have a weakness. Both gadgets are really good. Now, one gadget received a nerf. But I actually think it's kind of a buff. If you think about it, when you pop the gadget, you have four seconds to go in and kind of do as much damage and do as much work as you can before you kind of respawn at your original location. But that's a lot of time to die. If you think about it, four seconds is a ton of time. And then making it three seconds, I feel actually makes it easier for you to just run in, run forward, do as much damage as possible, and then respawn back. There's less of a chance for you to die. It's just easier for you to kind of get some value out of the gadget. And I actually think it's stronger now than it was before. Now, both star powers are kind of average. Both B star powers. Everything a brawler about the brawler is just a B. It's just about a B in every single mode. And that's why it's going to be the number 9. It's a very high skill cap brawler. So if you are good with max, you're going to absolutely pop off. But it's pretty simple. Auto aim friendly. Both gadgets are good. Both, you know, star powers are good. It's free to play friendly as well so you don't necessarily need those gadgets or those star powers but it's a pretty good brawler good in all modes and that's why we're gonna have it at number nine so coming in at number eight we have 8-bit now 8-bit was a little bit higher in the last balance it's gonna be lower now just because there are a lot of brawlers that are really good that counter it now one of the obvious ones being colette i don't want to spoil much else but it's just not as strong as it was in the last meta although nothing changed just some brawlers that got added to the meta are very strong against it such as Jesse, who can bounce shots, who can hit you really easily when you're slow, charge that turret. But then there are things that Apit is really good at, such as defending a bot, attacking a siege, long range maps. It's still an absolute unit. And once you have that super down, and if you have it in a safe area with control, Apit is a top three brawler if you can get into that situation. The unfortunate part is that it's not super strong when it's not in that situation. Now, it's good in just about every mode. It's not the strongest anywhere, but it's pretty well-rounded. It's pretty big laser, and you can definitely do a lot of damage. So that's why we're going to have it at number 8. But it is lacking a little bit just because some brawlers that counter it pretty well get, got a little bit stronger. So we're going to leave this at number 8, and let's keep going and continue our list. Coming in at number 7, and I wanted to put this a little bit higher, is going to be Amber. Now, Amber got a surprising buff. Um, it was definitely one of the worst brawlers in the game, like we said in our what should we buff or how to buff or how to rework brawlers. It wasn't very strong. It was kind of just like a C or a C plus in just about everything. Well, Brawl Stars changed that. And now Amber is about a B plus to an A minus in just about everything. It's a super annoying brawler and it actually counters some of the meta. It's really strong against some super meta brawlers. And that is why we're going to have it at 7. It's really important for a brawler to be good against the other brawlers in the meta because that kind of shapes out how it does it doesn't really matter how well a brawler does against a primo when you're never going to face a primo but if you're going to be facing an edgar every game or a sprout every game or a brawler such as that it's really important 
how well this brawler does against those brawlers and amber is really strong against the meta it's super annoying one of the most annoying brawlers to face in my opinion with the range and the poke and everything it has and honestly the high dps it has if you're just shooting a target it's super annoying to go up against and it's just not very fun so we're gonna have this at number seven because it's not specifically really strong at anything like an 8-bit like a colette it's not just super super op and anything it's kind of just well-rounded we're gonna keep this brawler at number seven but maybe it's gonna move up as time goes on and we don't know We'll see you soon, but for now, let's hop into the next brawler and let's get into number six. So coming in at number six in a brawler that's been very strong for a very long time is Mr. P. Now, Mr. P, you guys already know, has been one of the strongest brawlers for a long time. And for some reason, he got a buff kind of recently, not in the last update, but pretty recently he did get a buff. I think the one before, and he's been kind of in this top five area for a long time. Now, I do expect Mr. P does have a really big fall off really soon because he's been meta for a while. But as of right now, he's number six. Now, before I want to get a little bit more into Mr. P, I just wanted to thank Patchy for helping a ton with this list and for helping getting the games with me. But Mr. P, in any case, is strong in just about everything. There is no situations in which Mr. P isn't strong. He's just really good as a lane, really good as a mid, really good in siege, both attacking, defending, mid control, pretty strong in bounty, obviously strong in brawl ball. He's just strong everywhere, and it shows... You guys know how strong Mr. P is. I've talking about or I've spoken about Mr. P for a very, very long time in these videos. So I don't have to cover Mr. P too much. You guys already know. Very strong brawler, two very strong star powers. The gadget is sneakily annoying and it's just a really good brawler. So this is gonna be our number six. Let's move into our top five and let's keep going. So coming in at number five, we have Sandy. Now, before we get into number five and talk about Sandy, I wanna see how it's pretty cool how the gap between number five and number one actually isn't that big it's a pretty small gap you can make an argument that the brawler i'm gonna put at number one can be number five although i don't really think it's a realistic argument i think you can make that argument and you can make an argument the brawler i put number two could be number five and you can make an argument that sandy's actually the best brawler in the game so i think that's really cool how the gap isn't as big as it normally is it shows you know more versatility is that i don't know if that's even a word i think it's a word but it just shows that there's a lot more options in Brawl Stars and it's a lot more fun when there are a lot of options versus when Amber was meta and you would just run in a straight line with an Amber on your team and just win a game. But anyways, Sandy is super OP right now and you guys might think the buff isn't that significant. Charging your super in five shots instead of six, that's actually really impactful. You hit your first five shots, you immediately have super, you throw your super down, you heal up. And then you just get three free shots, basically. No one knows where you are. You're somewhere in the sandstorm, you know, kind of just chilling. And using Sandy, you can just kind of sneak up with him and get those easy three shots. And doing that, you're only two more shots away from your super. And you can just cycle really easily. The brawler is super strong right now. And it is fun, but it is also a little bit annoying. You guys know Sandy is a super annoying brawler. That sandstorm, if you're cycling it properly, it's so toxic to go up against it's not very fun but there are definitely more annoying brawlers in this game so i'm not complaining at all that's going to be our number five let's continue the top five and move on to number four so coming in at number four we have colette now colette is a very strong brawler and it was honestly one not too long ago it was probably the best brawler in the game it probably overtook byron by a little bit just because of how dominant colette was starting to become there are like two brawlers in which that actually hard, hard counter Colette that are actually useful in the meta. Maybe three if you include B. I guess B should be included since B is pretty strong, although it is kind of losing touch with the meta. But in competitive, Colette is probably the best brawler in the game just because competitive has bans and the two brawlers that hard counter Colette are most likely going to be banned in 100% of competitive games. But this isn't competitive we're talking about. This is ladder. So we're going to have Colette at number four. Now, Colette's really good. It basically demolishes every single tank. And by basically, what I meant to say is it does demolish every single tank. It demolishes every mid-range. So brawlers like Sandy, Nita, brawlers like that that are just strong mid-range brawlers get absolutely clapped by Colette. And Colette just dominates. I don't know. There isn't much else to say. The super is really good. The gadget is really good. Both star powers are, yeah, both star powers are really good. It's really good at a lot of things. And to be honest, I don't see it becoming a bad brawler in a while. Just the way the brawler is made, the fact that it's percentage based instead of numbers based 
is pretty crazy and it's going to keep the brawler strong for a while now if they wanted to nerf it they're going to have to nerf the percentages but i really don't see them doing that because colette has a really clean attack where if she hits a brawler twice at full hp and then supers them she can kill any brawler in the game and if they mess with those percentages i don't think that's going to be factual i think that's going to change so I'm pretty happy that Colette's going to stay that way or stay broken-ish because it's a pretty fun brawler. I enjoy it. And to be honest, you don't really have to aim with Colette, so that makes it a lot more fun. But anyways, that's going to be number four. Let's move into the top three. And it's a pretty interesting top three, but let's move into it and let's show you guys what's up. Now, coming in at number three, we have Jesse. Now, before we get into this, I hope some people from the European competitive scene who were memeing and roasting NA for saying that Jesse is going to be good and Jesse is strong in more modes than what they think are watching this because Jesse is easily a top three brawler right now and it is super good in basically every single mode outside of Bounty. Now, Jesse is obviously really strong as a mid. That's what she's been used as ever since 2017. Jesse has basically been a mid and that's it. But right now, Jesse is so strong in Siege, so strong at defending the bot, so strong at attacking. It's just such a useful and good, well-rounded brawler. The rework that they did is really good. I'm really happy that they did this rework because it was very important that Jesse did get reworked because they couldn't really buff it. They couldn't really nerf it. There wasn't anything that they could do with Jesse because Jesse was broken at lower trophies, but was basically useless at higher trophies. So the rework that they did was really good. So props on Brawl Stars for doing that. Um, but yeah, Jesse's just a really good brawler, really versatile. The star powers and the gadget, you can have a lot of different kind of makes and builds with your brawler. So you can have it so it's a control brawler where you can throw down your turret, use your gadget and get that little stun effect. And that's basically a guaranteed kill on whatever brawler you stun, at least gives you another supercharge. Or you can have what I'm running right here, which is just something to absolutely tank and stop the bot. Or something to just attack an Ike or a safe or whatever it is. You guys can see how fast this bot's just getting destroyed by the Jesse turret. And we could have had an even better defense because the Jesse turret could have tanked some shots. I kind of misplayed that turret. But long story short, Jesse is really good right now, especially if you have the gadgets. You kind of need the gadgets for the brawler to be good, to be honest. But if you do, Jesse is easily a top three brawler. And EU... NA is always ahead on the trend, so I hope you guys are watching this. But anyways, let's move on to the top two. The top two was actually really hard for me to determine which one is better than the other one. But let's hop into it and let's show you guys what's up. So coming in at number two and being dethroned from the number one position is going to be Byron. Now, Byron has been good for a long time. It used to be Byron, Colt, and Edgar. And remember, everyone was saying Edgar was the best brawler in the game, but we said, no, it's not actually that strong. It's kind of a, a wild brawler. You can get one kill, maybe two, but you can't really hold any position or sustain anything. Well, guess what? We were right. Everyone else was wrong. That's why we all subscribe to Bobby BS. Make sure you guys are subscribed. But anyways, Byron is the number two brawler in the game right now. And the reason it's number two is because the number one brawler just absolutely hard counters and destroys it. But anyways, Byron's number two, you guys know all about Byron. It's basically impossible to kill unless you're like a Piper or something like that. The super heals yourself, your gadget heals yourself. You can stay and just poke from incredibly long range. You do not have to be anywhere near anyone. It is just such a strong brawler. It's good at holding its own lane, but on top of that, you can help your teammates out with your shots. And the piercing gadget is really strong. There's just so much to like about this brawler. I couldn't, I can go in perfectly fine here knowing that I can just super myself and then gadget myself and have like 5k HP restored if I get hit. So I wasn't worried at all. But the brawler is just super strong. I don't have to really explain it that much. Strong in bounty, strong in gems, strong in siege. Not that strong in heist, but still pretty strong in heist when matched with a Colette. But this is going to be our number two brawler. Let's move into number one and let's talk about why it is the new best brawler in the game. So coming in at number one, we are going to have Mortis. Mortis is just easily the best brawler in the game, the most fun brawler in the game. I recommend everyone in every single mode to just play on Brawl Ball, especially randoms. Just have fun playing Mortis and Brawl Ball with randoms. It's an incredibly fun experience, best brawler in the game. And I would highly recommend playing with it. It is so, so, so good. As you guys can see from this trick shot over here, everyone can do this. It's easy work. Mortis is the best brawler in the game. But on a realer level, the number one brawler in the game is actually going to be Sprout. Now, Mortis isn't that bad. Mortis could probably be the number 11, number 12, or number 13 brawler in the game. And it does hard counter a lot of the stuff in meta. But the number one brawler in the game is going to be Sprout. And there's really no question right now. The, the buff to Sprout, I really did not understand. 
on top of the fact that he shoots over walls, on top of the fact that he can heal himself by walking in a bush, on top of the fact that he already had good damage, on top of the fact that he can have a shield anytime he walks in a bush, on top of the fact that he can solo defend a siege robot by just replacing walls over and over, and on top of the fact that he can change how people approach a map by putting walls down, they decided that Sprout needs some more damage. So here we are, we have Annoying Sprout as the number one brawler in the game. And if I'm gonna be honest, I'm not very happy. Now, I don't mind it when brawlers that aren't my favorite aren't the number one brawler in the game, or if brawlers that are annoying are number one, but I really don't understand why Sprout is number one. It's been a top brawler since April of last year, of 2020, and we are now almost in February of 2021, and it is still a top brawler. Now, Frank did tweet recently that there are going to be some changes before Brawl Stars first qualifiers, which is going to be late February. So I'm hoping and praying that Supercell decided, okay, let's give the Sprout users one more month to play Sprout. And then we are going to nerf this brawler to the ground like we did with Gene. And I really hope they do that because this brawler is just annoying. It's good in every mode. It's good against everything. Even the counters like Mortis, you can just heal yourself. You can just stand in a bush. You can just put a wall and basically not get hurt and just be perfectly fine. It's just a super annoying brawler. I don't have a great time when I face it. I don't have too much fun, but it's the number one brawler in the game. And that is that. I'm not even going to continue with it. You guys know how I feel about Sprout. You guys know how Sprout works. So let's just go to the outro and let's just keep it moving. So yeah, anyways, that is going to be it for our video. Now, again, there's going to be a new YouTube streaming channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to that link is going to be in the description below. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, as always, subscribe, like, comment, do all of that. But that's going to be it. I will catch you guys again tomorrow. I will see you guys then. Peace.